I don't want to pass through wireless fields all day long on the freeway, in the library, in my child's school. I would like the option to say, no thank you. The ability of our government or other governments to engage in warfare without declaring a word to anyone and be virtually undetected, we are living in that era today. What is happening? Something is going on. Can you feel the way? We have actually been living with more and more man-made radiation in the last 100 years. Our bodies are not designed to live with these man-made fields. And with the introduction and proliferation of the new wireless technologies, only within the last four years have we been exposing ourselves to this type of radiation. I'm the executive director of an organization called the Council on Wireless Technology Impact. And we are a grassroots organization that was born in response to a need. We are a growing network of citizens all over the world who are sharing information, who are taking issue with local policies, city, state, and federal. But we view this as an international prob problem that we are trying to address. The public is concerned all over the globe. And it is now recognized all over the world that it might be possible to considerably lower the limits of exposure. I got involved with this issue because I go to church in Marin County, Southern Marin County, and I have a little boy. And I heard that there was going to be a cellular antenna on the steeple of my church. And uh, my instant reaction was, well, tell me more. What does this mean? And the more I learned, the more concerned I began, became. And so I took issue with that proposal. Well, the church eventually decided to take heed of my concern. They investigated it. They brought in some experts from the industry, and they decided perhaps we shouldn't go forward with this, just in case we want to be a good neighbor. But what I learned in the process just made me decide to go forward. During Vietnam, there were many innovations in technology that uh, were developed. After all, we had a war to win over there. And, there were many companies uh, who were involved in that war who are still around today, like Raytheon, for example. But after the war, and at the end of the Cold War especially, these companies were looking for some oppor business opportunities. It's only natural that this would have happened. It's only natural that Raytheon and Motorola and other companies would look for peacetime uses of the technologies that they had developed. So what we have here is a situation where the technology is ahead of the science. Applause to Dr. Nick Begich. It's been learned that you can manipulate brainwave activity through light, through sound, through electromagnetic current. Um, any carrier that can pulse a signal in. And it's kind of like this. If you think about the electromagnetic spectrum, the whole continuum, you know, light, sound, x-rays, gamma rays, the whole thing. If you can pulse the signal at the right frequency, the brain will entrain, the brain will lock on. I'll give you an example. Do you remember, um, it was about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago now, in Japan, all the little kids were watching the cartoon and there were 700 of them taken to the hospital with epileptic seizures because of the way the light was flashing. The light was the carrier and the pulse rate hit a window frequency that triggered that chemical reaction within the brain. Now, a window frequency can be thought about in the same way by analogy, like dialing through the radio dial. In between the stations, it's transparent, nothing happens. You get static, nothing happens. You hit the right frequency and you get a nice clear signal. Uh, from approximately just a fraction of a hertz or pulse or cycle per second, um, up to about 4 hertz, or cycles per second, uh, is a delta frequency range, where you are in the very deepest, deepest states of sleep. The next stage is theta, which runs approximately from 4 to 7 hertz. 
Um, this range um, happens to be the predominant frequency of young children generally under the age of five or six. Um, and this is where adults find themselves in that state just sort of a, before you fall asleep and while you're still conscious. You know, so now you kind of understand why the kids are sort of a little disconnected and drifting off and doing some strange things little children do. But it also happens to be the place where children are learning language, social custom. I mean, you think about the amount of information between the age of, say, three and five that children are absorbing. That's their predominant brain state. You move above that up to um, about 12 hertz. Uh, you have the alpha state. This is the best state for creative work, creative thinking, um, that kind of activity, artistic work, writing learning, accelerated learning takes place in that range. Above that is, is beta, um, all the way up to upper beta where it's just highly agitated and um, angry uh, states. But you can move either purposefully or accidentally into these states by being exposed to fields um, that are, uh, or carriers, whether it's TV, radio, any of these carriers that we just mentioned, um, light, sound, um, and, and your brain waves can be driven uh, into that range and then you immediately fall into those states. You can also learn to do it yourself using brain biofeedback techniques. And this is pretty interesting because you can actually, um, within 30 days working with an apparatus for about an hour a day, achieve the deepest meditative uh, states that perhaps a Zen Buddhist might spend 20 years learning how to achieve on, on their own using, using their, just their own ability. Used to damage people, which is where the bulk of the research is taking place. The idea the military is designing systems to capitalize on this knowledge to create uh, situations where they can affect health, leaving no residual um, evidence. In other words, we didn't have anything to do with it. The ability to wage covert, covert war is never existed like it exists today and like it will exist in the coming decades. The ability of our government or other governments to engage in warfare without declaring a word to anyone and be virtually undetected, we are living in that era today.